topic of parsing efficiency is a, an advanced one. And by that, I mean that it's very unlikely that m the vast majority of the curator customer will have to deal with that. Uh, and also the fact that uh, most of the new log sources come in JSON format, which makes parsing much trivial. And you don't have to rely on regex as with the ones that are meant for humans to read, like the old logs that we get. Uh, makes it even less relevant towards the future. But still, there are very many log sources that exist out there that uh, rely on regex because they were written for human, not machine readable like JSON, but for humans, and they are very verbose. And that's why you need to rely on those regex. So for that, what are the topics? How do we begin to embrace this topic? We can see in documentations like this one that curator specifies, and memory is important, but most important here are the number of CPUs, that, for example, in an all-in-one 3199 appliance, virtual appliance, if you provide it, uh, and the suggested value is 24 cores, it can do uh, 5,000 EPSs, right? up to 5,000 EPSs. How is that established? Well, IBM also is very transparent and published the documentation on how they certify that, right? They specify, you know, they, they typify the type of and the mix of logs because all these can be uh, variant and they put some margins in there to make sure that they always cover that. But there is a concept that is related to all these and that is the average parse time. We can see in this table that in order to have the processing capability of 50,000 EPSs, you need to come up with an average parse time that is at 0 0.02 millisecond, right? If you notice that this thing actually, if you go from 0, 0, 002 to 02 using a factor of 10, the number of EPSs go down, goes down by a factor of a thousand. Right? So, how do you measure this average part time is something that I will cover at the end of the video. This is actually an IBM tool for doing that. But what is it that, where this dependency of the average part time comes from? Let's actually go to the whiteboard talk a little bit about it. So the average parts time, and it's going to vary for every combination of logs that, uh, and even flows that a particular curator installation will have, is, the, is affected, is determined by two things. One, again, and this is for the old time logs, by the regex and the efficiency of the regex, more on that later, that is used to parse and extract what is called a custom event properties. And I have done videos that shows that. Those are key for Curator. That's the way that, that Curator fragments every log and extract the different components. Every component that is extracted is called a custom event property. And those are used for the rules, on the searches, and is essential for Curator. Uh, well, the efficiency of the regex and, and I did some videos in case that you don't have your skills on regex sharp. I've done some videos that show you how to do regex for security very easily. Uh, so one of the things that IBM guarantees when it creates a parser or, or IBM services, somebody that is certified to do these things, is that they test this stuff to make sure that every parser comes with an average parse time or at most 0 0.02 milliseconds in order to you know make sure that it can really comply with the rest of the of the stuff typically this is like a like a high ceiling number typically the numbers are more like this and even if they are JSON they're even lower than that so if you don't have a regex that is optimized, and this is what they call an optimized parser, then you will not achieve this average parts time. 
But the other factor, and, and I, we're going to do some exercises on this in a minute, but another factor for this is actually how does that apply on the payload? You see, if for example you have an engine X type of logs, and they are being parsed with a Linux parser, or you have any other flavor of Unix, and either the person who assigned the, the log source made a mistake, and it seems to work, and it does work, uh, or the auto discovery got confused, and that's something that you need to correct, and I have done other videos on, on that. But in any case, if the parser that is used is not tuned for the payload, that is what in support they call a bad payload. And what are the things that can happen with a bad payload? Well, for once, something that will take very little time because of the structure of those logs being similar but not equal, then the, um, the average parse time increases dramatically. Also, it can be that what you are parsing on every logs that you get will never be found. So the, the system has to ex use all, expand all this hardware and software to look for something that it will never be found. But that, those things affect negatively your average parse time. We illustrate that concept I'm using the Regex 101, the same I use in my uh, Regex uh, video series. And here's a Palo Alto log, and we're going to put some regular expression to look for some specific custom properties in here. So if we put this regular expression, because we want to pick up the custom property destination location, notice that this particular case it finds two matches and it takes 2643 steps and 12 milliseconds. By the way, these milliseconds have a lot to do with the machine I'm using, the browser that I'm using. This you can use it comparatively, but they have nothing to do with these milliseconds that we see in here. Okay? So, so don't don't get hung up on that. So these are the that machine with all the engine, all the things tuning curator to to get that level of performance. So. But let's go back here and actually change. Notice that this is, you know, 2,643 and 12 milliseconds. Again, we can use this comparatively. But if we use a different regex, we still parse and extract that destination location. But notice it took us twice as much steps to get the same. And in fact, even if we use the uh, wrong regex, like this one, it will never find a match. And it doesn't tell you how much time it, it is spent. Uh, this tool doesn't tell you. But in the case of Curator, it will be spending a good deal of time applying all this logic to every one of the logs that comes uh, from, from Palo Alto and it will not find a match. And so that will be wasted time and that will affect adversely your average parse time. So in this case, you know, if, if you are using regex that unnecessarily are greedy or grabbing more stuff than the lazy one, then those takes more time. And, and again, you can use this tool to test when if you are building a DSM on your own uh, to make sure that the efficiency of your regex is actually good uh, enough to make sure that the in incorporating that DSM is not going to affect your performance. But how do you find your specific average parts time in your environment? Everyone is different. Well, in Curator, if you go to into SSH into the console, go OPT, Curator support. You're going to find in there one script that is called Fine Expensive Custom Properties, Custom Event Properties. There are only two shell scripts there, that and Fine Expensive Rules, which you don't use because you have the tuning tool to, to find that. But uh, 
Now, that uh, tool, uh, and I saw my good friend who actually taught me all this, Leopoldo Aguirre, also known as Polo, he showed me the methodology he and the guys in support or services follow to generate reports and interpret the reports and find the culprit. I mean, what are the specific custom event properties and what is the log source and the DSM that is actually ex uh, incurring in that expensive uh, uh, regex, right? Or if it's a bad payload in case that, you know, uh, they, they actually have the methodology for determining that. I'm not going to show that, even though I saw Polo using it, because I consider that those tools are more for those type of guys. Those tools are not like the tuning app in, in the use case manager that is, you know, meant for everybody to use. I think that those tools are still a little uh, difficult for a normal user to do. But if you have requirements for that, you can request services or... Uh, I guess that the support guys can show you the methodology, but they are not going to be doing it and running for this for you all the time. So you may need to get a business partner or IBM services that will do that for you. But that tool enables you to see whether you are not getting the 50,000 EPSs that you have licensed for and hardware for. Well, it might be because of an adverse average part time. And of course, all this conversation uh, assumes that you, you, of course, you get the 50,000 EPSs because you have the license to do so, or you have moved to the MVS model on CP4S in which you have unlimited EPSs and you don't have to worry about that.